so I'm uh, Billy Bob Thornton, and uh, uh, I'm a dyslexic. <laughs> you know, is that what they do at AA or something? <laughs> when I was growing up, they just thought I was slow, and uh, teachers thought I was lazy. So, yeah, I mean, dyslexia is, I mean, to say what it is, I know what it is to me. Reading for me to this day uh, is painful. Uh, I don't read well, and uh, to top it off, I, I guess I have whatever they, uh, they call it ADD or whatever it is, maybe, I don't know, but I don't retain what I read. I read the same books over and over because I know them and I love them. Uh, as an actor, uh, I, uh, 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 when I'm doing movies, uh, people read my dialogue to me, and that's the way I learn it. I don't learn it off the page. Um, I, you know, I don't have any trouble writing. That's the good news. <laughs> you know, I mean, as a writer and a songwriter and all that, I can sit down and write stuff. People can't read it, but you know, at least I can write it down. I never wanted to be anything that school ha taught me, except I was in drama. Uh, but I was only in drama because there were girls in there. And my drama teacher was a woman named Maudie Treadway, and uh, I was actually a pallbearer at her funeral. And uh, she died not long after we graduated. And she comes up to me after class one day, and she says, listen, I think you could actually become very successful at this in the future. And I'm like in a little town in Arkansas, and I kind of listened to her and everything. And, I was suddenly the star of the senior play and all these kind of things. And she said, I'm going to have you start writing your own scenes in here. We're not going to do things just out of the traditional books. And we're going to try something. It was the first time in my life in an organized uh, uh, institutional kind of setting where somebody ever said, wow, you're good at this and I'm gonna let you do what you want. And um, I did, and it turns out, it's like, wow, this is amazing. I would get up there and do monologues and stuff that just off the top of my head. I made this movie called Sling Blade in 94, and uh, when I first wrote that movie, I didn't write it down, not the whole movie. It was the, the beginning of it. I used to do it in, on stage in the theater. I did the, sort of the opening of it. There's like a long eight or nine minute monologue in the beginning of that. And when I, I used to do it in the theater, I'd never written it down anywhere. It was all in my head. So I can do all of those things. I can't read this stuff to you very well. But once I learn it, I never forget it. If you tell me your phone number right now, I'll never forget it. It's, it's like you live on some different plane or something. You know, You don't even deal with things the way most people do. And I remember Stephen Cannell was one of the first people I remember who was a, like a known person that I heard of having dyslexia. And I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. I've never met the guy, but you know, maybe, maybe we should have a, maybe we should have like a yearly uh, picnic, <laughs> you know, some, get all the people in the movie business who have it. There's a Learning Disabled Hall of Fame in Washington, D.C. And I, I'm in that. <laughs> and I tell people, I'm in the uh, Hall of Fame for the Learning Disabled. And they start laughing, right? They think I'm joking. I say, no, seriously. I mean, plaques on the wall, the whole yeah. deal. The year that I was inducted, which was 2000 or 2001, somewhere in there, it was me and the head of the Chicago Mer Mercantile, uh, head of medicine at Johns Hopkins, you know what I mean? And uh, people like that. So it wasn't like, you know, you know, me and a couple serial killers. It was like, you know, so the school in Washington, D.C., they take me around, they show me these classes before my induction ceremony thing. And they've got kids in the history class all dressed up like, one's dressed like Shakespeare, the other one's dressed like uh, Da Vinci. And they make it into something that focuses them, you know, uh, where it's like, well, this is fun, I like this. And the next thing you know, they learn history because they're interested. It's, it's just not some guy's name on a page. It, the guy comes to life to them. So it's like they're involved in the actual life. You know, they make it interesting for them. So, hey, there's a novel idea. Make school interesting, <laughs> you know? And I, I thought, well, why do they not do this every minute? This is what they ought to be doing, people. And any other, other things, uh, even besides dyslexia, anything you got that prevents you from learning in the conventional sense or that makes it harder for you, they should be teaching kids. That's why I believe in these schools 
that are these sort of free artistic schools where they where they encourage kids in the direction that they're uh, the directions that they're interested in as opposed to you must do these five subjects everybody has to know math science this that because you're not going to use it it's like I told that teacher uh, years ago in algebra she said well what if you want to be a building engineer I said ma'am I promise you with all my heart and soul I'm never going to want to be a building engineer